Now let's move on to discuss structures of the lower respiratory system, including the larynx, trachea, and bronchi. The larynx. This image depicts the larynx in an anterior view, including the thyroid cartilage, as well as the thyrohyoid ligament, which is attached to the hyoid bone. The larynx is also known as the voice box. It's the site of voice production. The larynx extends from C4 or C5 to the level of C7. It's held in position in the anterior of the neck with a variety of muscles and ligaments. Superior to the larynx is the hyoid bone, and the greater horns of the hyoid bone support the larynx, and the lesser horns are connected to the stylohyoid ligaments. The body of the larynx is made up of thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, and the epiglottic cartilage. The cartilage of the larynx. The thyroid cartilage is the largest cartilage of the larynx and it makes up the majority of the anterior and lateral walls. On its anterior surface is a ridge that's visible and palpable known as the laryngeal prominence. The thyroid cartilage articulates with the cricoid cartilage and has the following attachments. Ligaments attach to the epiglottis and the small laryngeal cartilages. The cricoid cartilage is a ring of cartilage that's inferior to the thyroid cartilage. Both cartilages function to protect the glottis and the entrance to the trachea. This cartilage articulates with small paired artenoid cartilages that have attachments to the first cartilage of the trachea. The epiglottis. The epiglottis performs a very important function to protect the airway. Depicted in the sagittal view, the epiglottis is open to allow airflow into the trachea or closed to protect the airway during swallowing, for example. The epiglottis projects upward to the glottis. It's supported by the epiglottic cartilage with attachments to the anterior and superior borders of the thyroid cartilage and the hyoid bone. As the larynx rises during swallowing, the epiglottis moves backwards and downwards to seal off the glottis. Voice production in a human body. This image depicts the larynx with the glottis open. Towards the anterior side is the epiglottis, the vocal folds, and towards the posterior, the cuneiform cartilage. Also towards the posterior is the corniculate cartilage. The vocal folds of the larynx are flexible due to the elastic nature of the vocal ligament. Voice production occurs primarily in the larynx or voice box. Within the voice box is a set of cartilages located at the front of the throat which contains the vocal folds. The opening and closing of the vocal folds as air passes through them produces sounds of different quality. The entire larynx vibrates during sound production and the echoing of the sound occurs in the pharynx, oral cavity, nasal cavity, and the paranasal sinuses. The muscles of the larynx. The anterior muscles of the neck position the larynx, move the vocal cords, depress the mandible, and provide a foundation for the tongue and pharynx muscles. The laryngeal musculature is divided into number one, intrinsic muscles, and number two, extrinsic muscles. Intrinsic muscles place tension on the vocal folds and open and close the glottis. Extrinsic muscles position and stabilize the larynx. Now we'll describe the actions of swallowing. Swallowing is a complex event that's coordinated by the swallowing center in the lower portion of the brainstem. During this process, food passes from the mouth to the pharynx and into the esophagus. This occurs in three phases an oral phase, a pharyngeal phase, and the esophageal phase. The oral phase. Initially, the food bolus is moved to the back of the tongue. This triggers swallowing by stimulating touch receptors in the pharynx. Then, the anterior of the tongue lifts to the hard palate and forces the food bolus to the pharynx. Then the posterior portion of the tongue is lifted, which closes the nasal pharynx and prevents the food from entering the nasal passages. 
the food bolus is then propelled into the pharynx by an anterior to posterior movement of the tongue. The pharyngeal phase of swallowing. During the pharyngeal phase, the larynx is pulled forward and upward under the tongue by muscular contraction. As the larynx rises, the epiglottis moves backwards and downwards to seal off the glottis. The upper esophageal sphincter opens and the bolus of food then moves into the esophagus. The esophageal phase. During the esophageal phase, the food bolus is pushed through the esophagus by involuntary muscle contractions called peristalsis. The muscle fibers just above the bolus contract and this constricts the esophageal wall and pushes the food bolus downward. These contractions proceed in a wave, pushing the bolus towards the stomach. The lower esophageal sphincter relaxes and this also facilitates the bolus moving into the stomach. The trachea. This image depicts the trachea. The trachea is inferior to the larynx but superior to the location of the carina. This image also depicts the primary and secondary bronchi. The trachea or windpipe is a flexible tube that extends from the level of C6 to mediastinum at the level of T5. This is a flexible tube approximately 11 centimeters long with a 2.5 centimeter diameter. The wall of the trachea is made up of respiratory epithelium overlying a layer of connective tissue and separated from the trachea cartilage by the lamina propria. The mucosa layer is made up of the interwoven epithelium and the lamina propria. The submucosa contains mucous glands that communicate with the surface. The cartilage that makes up the trachea. There are between 15 and 20 tracheal cartilages, and specialized elastic annular ligaments hold each trachea cartilage in place and attach it to the adjacent ones. The strength and rigidity of the trachea protect the airway and prevent its collapse from changes in pressure. At the anterior surface of each tracheal cartilage is a solid C-shape, whereas at the posterior side, the cartilage is open and not continuous. At the open end that faces the esophagus, the tracheal cartilages move during the actions of swallowing. The sympathetic nervous system can modulate the airflow in the trachea through the activation of smooth muscle bands located there. The following is a clinical note on tracheal blockage. Tracheal blockage involves the lodging of a foreign object in the trachea. If the victim of a foreign object in the trachea can neither speak or breathe, it can be a deadly situation. If a foreign object, including food, becomes lodged in the trachea, a forced movement such as a Heimlich maneuver should be performed. The Heimlich maneuver is also known as an abdominal thrust. It involves the application of pressure just below the diaphragm. This externally applied pressure may generate enough pressure inside the respiratory system to expel the lodged foreign object. The Heimlich maneuver should be attempted by trained individuals, and this can be learned through the Red Cross Society, for example, or a local fire department. The next portion of the lower respiratory tract we'll discuss are the respiratory bronchi. The left and right main bronchi stem from the trachea at the carina. The carina is a ridge on the inner surface of the trachea that extends anterior-posteriorly between the two primary bronchi. The left and right primary bronchi are actually outside of the lungs and are therefore known as extra-pulmonary bronchi. The main bronchi have a similar structure to that of the trachea, made up of C-shaped cartilaginous rings. As each primary bronchus extends towards the lung, at the hilum of the lung, it branches into the secondary bronchi. The root of each lung is made up of the distal end of the main bronchi and the hilum, and it's attached to the mediastinum with a meshwork of dense connective tissue. The roots of the lungs are located at T5 for the right side and T6 for the left. 